All right, everybody, it is time for another sunset story. It's time for the sunset story. Is it real? Is it really real? You be the judge. Is that real? Who knows if that's real? What do you think? Is that real? Is it real? Does Terry Alexander think it's real? You think it's real, Terry? All right, everybody, it's time for another sunset story from Acapulco, Mexico, Ming. Uh, today's story is about Sean Stevenson, the three foot giant. Man, oh man, oh man. So I, so I have studied with every great speaker. I've studied them all and one of my favorite mentors in the speaking world Stevenson the three foot giant this guy had a ball big bald head and a tiny tiny very disease ridden body he had some kind of rare crazy disease where his bones would break a lot and he only grew to be three feet tall and he rode around in a wheelchair and that did not stop him that did not stop him he got a phd and he was some kind of a therapist counselor and he was a great public speaker he was a great public speaker really really good and he had a speaking career, you know, he even taught a class called, I think it was called Six Figure Speeches. Now, oh no, it was 10K Speeches. That would That's what it was called, 10K Speeches. Now, knowing what I know now, I know this is the funniest part of it all. It's like, there were all these people who would sign up to go study with him about 10K speeches and everybody loved him because he was funny and he was a person who did not let obvious quote unquote handicaps get in his way of being successful in life, professionally and personally. He was married to a woman named Mindy Mindy was like five feet something tall, pretty woman, young. And here he was riding around in a wheelchair. And that was his shtick. Yeah, exactly. If Clint is doing it, it is for real. That's right, I'm the real thing. People were asking me, you know who it was, Terry Alexander? It was Brian Fucking who was saying, that doesn't even look like a real, a real sunset. It looks fake. Anyway, Sean Stevenson, I saw him speak for the first time at one of the Genius Network meetings. I was in this club. It was a $25,000 a year club for, you know, successful, wealthy business owners, right? And he was best friends with he was best friends with the leader of the club, Joe Polish. And Joe Polish, very rightly, would call on him and he would get to speak at events. Well-deserved speaking opportunities, Sean Stevenson would get. And he was funny, a funny speaker. And one day I get an email from Joe Polish promoting Sean Stevenson's new seminar, the 10K Speeches Seminar. And I didn't know anything in those days. I was still learning about, like I had never hired anyone to be a speaker or a celebrity at any of my events. But I, cause today, like if anybody told me, oh, I'm gonna teach you how to get paid $10,000 as a speaker, I would say, well, 
No one who's a speaker who gets paid $10,000 is any good. Like anybody who only gets paid $10,000 to be a speaker is no and knows nothing about the speaking business and I would never ever hire them and uh, you know, basically that. But in those days, I still didn't know anything. So I go, so I sign up to go to Sean Stevenson's 10K speeches seminar. And it was, it was fun. And this was, this was right after I got my, I think this was right after I got my, either my first hair replacement operation or my second hair replacement operation. I'm not sure which, probably my first. And I had a bald head, see? And I go to this event and, and Joe Polish has a cue ball bald head and Sean Stevenson has a cue ball bald head, right? And I go to this event and, I, oh, and I, and, and I, And I see Joe Polish there and I go up to him and I'm like, hey Joe, you know, let's make a video. And we made a video of me talking to Joe Polish, asking him questions about the Genius Network. And in the background is Sean Stevenson in his wheelchair on the stage. And man, that is one of the funniest freaking videos of all time. And Sean Stevenson and Joe Polish really liked me in those days because I had a bald head. This is before all my hair grew in, right? And Sean Stevenson is in the background of mine and Joe Polish's video and he's making all kinds of crazy faces like, like that and he's like smacking his own butt, like spanking himself. It was, it's a freaking hysterical video, all right? I'll try to, I'll put a link to it. I'll put a link to it in the comments of this because it's freaking hysterical. And that was the first, the first time I went to his seminar. Now, I did learn some amazing things about being a speaker from Sean Stevenson. Sean Stevenson said, like, first of all, he starts out this whole seminar by going, like he turns out all the lights. This was a really interesting and fun beginning to a seminar. Probably one of the best ones I've ever been to, that I've ever seen at a seminar. He turns out all the lights, we're sitting there in darkness. And then you hear his voice in the darkness and he says, August 24th, 2.38 a.m. Oh no, I'm on the floor. What am I doing? Why am I on the floor? Oh no, my arm, my arm is broken. Oh no, my arm. Why, why is my arm broken? Why does this keep happening to me? I can't have a broken arm. I'm having a seminar. In three weeks, I have 150 people coming. Why, why, why does this keep happening to me? That's how he starts the seminar. And it took me a long time to understand that, what he was doing there. I actually came back and did his seminar again the second time. The second time I did his seminar, like at the end of his seminar, you could buy a ticket to the next one. And he said, and if you buy a ticket to the next 10K speeches event, you can have, uh, you will also get to participate in the filming of my product. I'm gonna be shooting my information product at that event, making a, turning the seminar into an information product. That's my middle name. You know, I'm Dan Kennedy's information marketer of the year. No one has studied the manufacture of information products the way I have. Any you could buy a ticket to a seminar that included the creation of a product, I would do it. I was an attendee and in the audience at the filming of Dan Kennedy's new magnetic marketing product. I was an attendee and in the audience of uh, Mike Koenigs's author expert marketing machines, okay? I was also part of the product. I was one of the featured interviews inside of author expert marketing machines. And I was um, a member of the audience and got to see behind the scenes 
at the manufacturer of this Sean Stevenson product of 10K speeches, as well as uh, I was at the live stream manufacturing of a Joe Polish information product as well. I'm sure there are others. Those are just the ones that pop to my mind most readily. And I'm at this second event now with Sean Stevenson while he's filming his information product. And I got to observe very closely the way he would tell stories and the shtick that he utilized to make himself such a great speaker. Now, one of his favorite stories that he would tell was when he was an intern in the Bill Clinton White House. And of course, he's in his wheelchair and one, he tells the story about, and I love this, he would say, and he tells the story about how one day I decided that when the Marine One helicopter came and landed on the White House lawn, I took it upon myself that I was going to go and greet the president. Now in, the, in those days in the White House, they had these doors with uh, a certain type of lock. And the only way that I could get through the door is, this, is if I built up a big head of steam and I would, uh, so I started all the way at the end of the hallway in my wheelchair and I was wheeling, wheeling, wheeling as fast as I could to break through the door and I burst through the door and out onto the lawn and I had so much momentum that I just kept going across the lawn. And as I'm rolling towards the helicopter, it's landing on the lawn and as I'm rolling out towards the helicopter to greet the president, I look up to my office window because I know where it is in relationship to the lawn. And I just glance over my shoulder at the office window and I see my boss in the window and his face looked like this. No! Pause this is exactly what he did. Pause. Now, Everybody's cracking up laughing at his story, at his humorous story about his boss freaking out about him rolling across the lawn in his wheelchair to greet the president. Everyone's cracking up and he goes, pause. Now, that glance at the window with my boss screaming in horror, that never happened. It never happened. But how does it hurt anybody for me to say that? Everybody loves it. Every, yeah, I put it in there one time as a joke that I tried out and everybody cracked up laughing. Everybody cracked up laughing. I kept it in. Because as a speaker, my first responsibility is to entertain and I will never, ever, ever make the mistake of letting the facts get in the way of a great story. Hello? Hello? See what I'm saying there? And I say that to a lot of people and I, and look, I, I deal with a lot of people who make a lot of money. I deal with financial advisors, I deal with doctors, I deal with lawyers. And I always say with the caveat, I always say, hey, look, I am not saying that it's okay for you to lie about anything that's material, that matters. Don't ever lie about anything material that matters. Don't ever say that you made a billion dollars for your client when you didn't. But if you're telling a harmless story and you add in a harmless detail that never happened, but gets a, gets a laugh out of the audience, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Now, here's the part that I've never told anybody. At this event, this was my second event of going to 10K speeches with Sean Stevens. And I did not attend the whole event because honestly, I didn't feel like, I don't know, I didn't feel like I needed to 
be there every minute of every day at that event. I walked in and I walked in late. I walked out after lunch and didn't come back for the next section. And I came back for the final section of the day. I don't know. But I do remember at one point I made a video. I stood up in front of the room after the room was dismissed. After the whole seminar had ended for the day. I stood up and I shot a video in front of his stage area, in front of the curtain. And I posted that video. And then I bought a ticket to come back to the next 10K speeches. I was gonna go back for my third one because I still wasn't done studying Sean Stevenson. He was a master storyteller and speaker. And for me, I'm happy to pay money to study with a living legend. I'm always happy to pay money to study with top people. Happy to do it. And I paid for the third iteration of 10K speeches. And a couple of months later, I get an email from Sean Stevenson. And he says, you know, I haven't been entirely honest with you. I don't like the fact, I don't like the way you make me feel when you attend my seminar. I don't like how you come in late. And I don't, I, I'm pretty sure he said, I don't like your, you know, I don't like you and how you feel about all your hair. Because at this point I had had already a second hair replacement operation. And I was no longer a member of the bald guys club. And all of a sudden, I wasn't getting the love anymore from Sean Stevenson and Joe Polish. And I don't know, I don't know if it was personalities, I don't know if it was a competition because I started teaching people how to be a speaker, I started holding my own celebrity driven events that, that, that I was like, you know, attracting clientele out of Genius Network, I don't know what it was. Or if, I don't know if it was just because I wasn't in the ball guys club anymore. I don't know. But Sean Stevenson said he didn't want me to come back to the third class anymore. And I said, okay, just refund my money. And he did. Well, that was 2015, 16 in there. That's the last time I ever saw Sean Stevenson. In 2019, I'm sure many of you read the posts about how Sean Stevenson got into an accident. I read about it when I saw Joe Polish post that Sean Stevenson had an accident and fell out of his wheelchair. And he hit his head and was rushed to the hospital for surgery on his busted open head. And Sean Stevenson, as he was being rolled into the operating room, Joe Polish says that he was there as, as Sean Stevenson was being rolled into the operating room. And Sean Stevenson's last words on this earth come from Tony Robbins. And you know, Sean Stevenson was a Tony Robbins, he used to tell Tony Robbins stories. He used to talk about how Tony Robbins was his mentor. And when Joe Polish saw Sean Stevenson right before he was rolled into the operating room where he died, he said to Joe Polish, this is happening for me. Now, Tony Robbins has created some remarkable technologies. Just little things that you got to do. As I said, when I told my Tony Robbins story, just his one thing, if you're afraid, you must. I have really profited in my life 
by employing that, that idea as an operating system for myself. If you're afraid, you must. Because of if you're afraid, you must, I bought my first tear down and made so much money that today we're completing the construction of our dream home in the Hollywood Hills, a multi-million dollar home. All came out of if you're afraid, you must. But when we were at Tony Robbins' birthday party just a couple weeks ago, I realized the biggest life lesson of Tony Robbins is just like Sean Stevenson said. And if Sean Stevenson could say it on his death gurney, wow, this is happening for me. And I know that the world is a scary place right now. There's more ways to die than you can shake a stick at. And they're all coming at us 24 seven in 3D here on Facebook. But somehow I do believe if life was happening for Sean Stevenson when he fell out of a wheelchair and cracked his head open and died, that everything that we are going through today is happening for us. For me, it's happening. Hey, thank you so much for joining me again tonight on Sunset Stories. I'll be back tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. 6.30 p.m. Mountain for another edition of Sunset Stories. Until then, good night, everybody.